Are you thinking about making a move over to the Seattle, Washington area? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of living in Seattle and its surrounding suburbs, so stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm Bryce Greenleaf. I'm a local real estate agent here in the greater Seattle area. I love making videos all about what it's like living over here in Seattle and moving over this direction and its surrounding suburbs. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell so you get notified whenever I make a new video. And if you are thinking about moving over here, feel free to download uh, my free relocation guide down in the description. Hopefully that could help you out a little bit, but I love helping you guys out. Those of you that are moving over this way, you guys reach out to me all the time with your questions and looking for some help when you're moving over here when it comes to buying a home. Like I said, I am a real estate agent over here, so I'm more than happy to help guide you through that process of moving over here and finding that right home for you to purchase and getting settled in over here and hopefully making, like I said, that transition a little bit easier on you. So feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen for that. But like I said, in today's video, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of living in Seattle and its surrounding suburbs. So let's start with the cons. So con number one, and this is the most obvious one that you probably know about, is the high home prices. So if you're coming from a place like California, maybe even Oregon, uh, anywhere on the West Coast or anywhere on the East Coast where you have pretty expensive home prices, this might not be as much of a con for you because it might actually be a little bit cheaper from, than where you're coming from. But for those of you that are coming from anywhere else in the United States, you're probably not used to these home high home prices over here. Now, the median home price in Seattle is right around 860,000 right now. Now that is just for the city of Seattle. That is not all the surrounding suburbs. You could go somewhere as expensive as Bellevue on the east side of Seattle and pay 1.6 million in median home prices. Or you could go down south, Tacoma area. You can find places under 500,000 for the median home prices and anywhere in between. So there are a ton of different options around here, but yes, common theme is the home prices over here are more expensive than the majority of the United States. So that's something you gotta be prepared for if you're moving over this way. Con number two is the gray weather. So for me, it's not a con, but I know for a lot of people it is. The trade-off here is we don't get extreme temperatures. So we don't get super hot summers for the most part, and we don't get a bunch of snow and just freezing cold winters either. So the trade-off there, we get more mild temperatures, but we do get a lot of gray weather. So you're gonna have a lot of days where it's gray and overcast and you're not gonna see the sun versus some other spots in the country. You'll see the sun almost every single day, whether it's cold or hot, doesn't matter. Over here, not the case you're not gonna see the sun quite as much as some other spots around the country. So just be prepared for that. You know, that can bring down people's mood a little bit when they're feeling gray and whatnot. And along with that gray weather comes rain. We're talking more of a drizzle and a misty rain. We don't get torrential downpours nearly that often compared to some other locations but we do get a decent amount of kind of a drizzle, misty rain. So a lot of the time you wake up in the morning and the ground is wet because of that. And it comes along with that gray weather. And then sometimes it'll burn off in the afternoon. Sometimes it won't, just depends on the day, but you do have a lot of gray weather and a decent amount of misty, drizzly type rainy days. Con number three is the bad traffic. So that's not a secret around here. The traffic is terrible. So if you're looking to move to the Seattle area and you already have a job set up, whether that's right in Seattle or in some other location, you need to figure out drive times before you decide where you're gonna live. You don't wanna be working in downtown Seattle and be living 35, 40 miles away because even though it might be a straight freeway drive, 35, 40 miles could be 35, 40 minutes. That's without traffic. If you're factoring in traffic, you could have an hour and a half commute each way to get to and from work in that kind of distance. So you gotta figure out where you're working first and then decide where you're gonna live so you can figure out places that have a little bit easier commute because you can't just look at the mileage and say, oh, it's gonna be this, this little bit of a commute. It's likely not gonna be that way in the heavy traffic time. Seattle is really landlocked between the Puget Sound and Lake Washington. So specifically through downtown Seattle, through the city of Seattle, it gets really, really backed up because it's just a narrow opening through there on the freeway. And really outside of Seattle and the surrounding suburbs, there aren't a lot of great you know, side streets, other options, different freeways that you can take. There's some other options, but it's still backed up on most of the side streets or other freeways that you might be able to take. So just plan ahead for that. The traffic is not good here and public transportation public transportation is so-so just depending on where you're living and working, um, but traffic is pretty bad. So just be prepared for that. Con number four is the downtown Seattle issues. So uh, downtown Seattle has its fair share of issues that I'm sure you've heard about on the news or other places on the internet maybe if you're not from here. 
but it is becoming kind of a less safe place to be. It is very dirty downtown Seattle. Um, there's graffiti all over the place. There's uh, uh, homeless encampments, tent sites all over the place. You'll find needles all over the ground from people shooting up heroin or whatever drug they're doing. So downtown Seattle is a very um, dirty place. It's not necessarily the best place that you want to be. Again, it depends on your, your lifestyle and your personality. I personally would never live in Seattle, in downtown Seattle, that is. I live in a suburb, and we rarely even visit downtown Seattle anymore. Maybe once a year at the most, we actually go down there, just because I don't like to go down there anymore. Um, like I said, it's got a lot of downsides to it. So when you're moving over here, if you're looking to live right in the city of Seattle, that's kind of the downside you got to deal with. Not that a bunch of people don't live down there. There's tons of high-rise condo buildings and whatnot downtown that are full of people living there. It's just about what lifestyle you like and what's most important to you when you're moving over this way. So Seattle has a ton of those bad downtown problems, but all the surrounding suburbs do not have those issues. So great places to live outside of the city of Seattle, but I'll go over that in the pros list after I finish the cons here. All right, con number five is the lack of air conditioning. So only about 50% of homes in the Seattle metropolitan area actually have air conditioning in them. So if you're somebody that's moving over here, I would highly recommend you figure out some source of air conditioning. Well, when I was a kid, it wasn't really something that affected us all that much. It didn't get hot. I feel like it's getting hotter and hotter every summer over here. And this last summer, we had the worst heat wave in the history of Seattle. And people were just really, really struggling without AC. So we personally, we don't have AC in our home. So we had to go up and buy a couple portable AC units uh, for some of the bedrooms that helped us get through. So if you're coming from somewhere like Texas or one of these, you know, Arizona, some really warm location that's used to having AC in every single home, you're not gonna find that around here. Like I said, about 50% of homes have AC. So if by chance you buy a home that doesn't have AC, you might wanna budget that in. Uh, whether you just install uh, forced air, air conditioning in the home, or you take some alternative route, I would recommend going that route. The portable AC units only cool down so much. They, they're not that great. They just kind of get you by. So that's something you might need to budget in if that's something that's gonna be really important for you if you buy a home that already does not have AC. All right, and the last con here, con number six, is there's construction everywhere. Now, this is a common theme with every large city you're gonna go to. There, it's just continually to grow at a very rapid pace. So there's construction all over the place in the city of Seattle and in all of the surrounding suburbs to try and support, you know, the infrastructure that we need to support the growth and population and how many people are living over here. So this can cause delays, even more delays in commuting. I, I mentioned the traffic was bad when you throw in some construction in some areas that can make it even worse and make things take even longer. So you kind of got to plan for that, figure out where the construction is when you're commuting and, and factor that into your commute times every day when you're going to work. All right, so let's move over to the pros. We've covered up my, the main cons here. Let's move to the pros. So pro number one is great jobs. There are not many places in the country where you're gonna find a better job market than Seattle and its surrounding suburbs. This is gonna be at the top of the list. If you're somebody that's looking for a career, maybe in the tech field, we are a huge tech hub over here. Uh, we've got Microsoft headquarters, Facebook and Amazon and Google, uh, GoDaddy, T-Mobile, Expedia, there is a lot of different uh, tech companies over in this area, whether they're right in the city of Seattle or one of the close suburbs like Bellevue or Redmond or Kirkland, that's also where some of the tech companies are. There's a lot of opportunities for jobs over here. Outside of just tech companies, you've got Boeing, which is of course the large plane manufacturer. We're right on the Puget Sound, so you've got maritime jobs. There's great healthcare opportunities around here. We have a lot of great hospitals, University of Washington Medical Center. So there are a lot of great healthcare opportunities in this area as well. There's so much that you can do when it comes to looking for a job over here, and it's a great place for you to be if you're coming over here for a job for your career and being able to make a good amount of money. Pro number two is the recreation around here. You can't beat being in the Pacific Northwest. We've got the mountain ranges to the east side of us, and you've got the Puget Sound to the west side. And in between, you've got a ton of lakes and other activities that you can take advantage of. So. If you wanna go on the Puget Sound, there are plenty of beautiful spots there. Whether you wanna go swimming or just hang out on the beach, play beach volleyball, have a barbecue, take the ferry over, do a little day trip to an uh, ice cream shop across the ferry. You wanna go kayaking or paddle boarding. 
There's so much that you can do right there on the Puget Sound. Like I said, if you want to go all the way east and go to the mountains, you want to go skiing and snowboarding, you want to go mountain biking and hiking, there are endless amount of opportunities for hikes and mountain biking around here and plenty of skiing and snowboarding as well, plenty of wintertime activities. Things like whitewater rafting as well, and I mentioned uh, kayaking, uh, paddleboarding, things like that. And if you want to stay in more central, uh, you can go to one of the many, many lakes we have. We've got Lake Washington, Lake Sammamish, Lake Stevens, Lake Goodwin, and a ton of other smaller lakes around here where you can take the boat out and go wakeboarding or water skiing or have the kids tubing behind the boat or go fishing or just go out and hang on the boat and, and have some drinks, play some card games, whatever you do, hanging out on the boat or taking the jet skis out. Again, you can go paddle boarding or kayaking here on the lakes. You can go swimming. You can go to some of the lakes that have a lot of uh, recreational opportunities in terms of parks at the lake. So whether that's basketball courts or tennis courts, um, walking paths, uh, playgrounds for the kids, tons of different stuff that you can do around here. And like I mentioned with the Puget Sound and the mountains going west or east, they're all very close to you. It's not like you're driving four hours just to get to the mountains or Puget Sound. You know, I can get to the Puget Sound within 20 minutes of my house at the most, and then we can get over to uh, Stevens Pass if we wanted to go snowboarding or uh, tubing, you know, um, inner tubing down the snow, snowy hills there at the pass. We can get over there in an hour or less from where we live and that's common theme with everywhere around the Seattle metro area, your quick access to all of this stuff. So it's not a full, full drive, full day trip to go and do this. Your super quick access to all this amazing recreation available in the Seattle metropolitan area. Pro number three, like I mentioned before, is there are so many suburbs around here, not just the city of Seattle. That's, you know, one location that has definitely some of its own drawbacks, but you can go north to Snohomish County. There are some amazing suburbs that you can live in up there, like Linwood and Muckleteo and Edmonds and Bothell and Lake Stevens and Snohomish, some great areas to live. You can go to the east side of Seattle, east of Lake Washington, which is the most expensive side where a lot of the tech companies are. That's where Bellevue and Kirkland and Redmond and Issaquah and Sammamish are. Great schools over there. And of course, like I said, expensive living. But again, that's because of the jobs that are over there. Microsoft headquarters are over there and a bunch of other tech companies that are drawing people over that way. And of course, increase the home prices because of that. And then south of Seattle, southeast of Seattle, there are some great places to live as well. So when you're coming over here, you wanna make sure you do your research first on where you might wanna live. You could be considering over 80 suburbs around the Seattle area if you're moving over this way. So make sure you do your research and figure out what suburbs might be best for you. Check out some of my other videos I have on this channel where I dive deeper into the suburbs and some of the best suburbs in the greater Seattle area. Pro number four, I just mentioned this briefly, but there are great schools around here. So everywhere around the Seattle metropolitan area, you're gonna be able to find some great schools. Now, of course there are, it has a share of not so great schools, you might say, with a large, uh, a large urban area like Seattle, um, there are some, you know, maybe not so great schools. And then in some of the surrounding suburbs, there are plenty of amazing schools, very, very highly rated schools. Like I mentioned on the east side where the tech companies are, uh, Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, places like that. Those are some of the most high rated schools. So the best resource that I have found to look at school ratings are, is niche.com, N-I-C-H-E.com. And it ranks all of the school districts in Washington state. And as you'll see, there are a ton of great uh, rated school districts in this Seattle metropolitan area. Pro number five is there's no state income tax in Washington. So if you're coming from somewhere like California and you're paying a really high rate on your state on uh, your income tax, you come to Washington, you're not going to have that. So on top of making good money with the great jobs over here, you're actually going to be saving even more money. You could be saving up to 10% more in annual income if you're coming from a place like California where you're paying those really high income tax rates. So coming over here, you can save a lot more money and it can definitely outweigh you know, those home prices and some of the more expensive things when it comes to living around here. You're saving a lot of money by having no state income tax in Washington. Pro number six is the food and beverage scene. So Coming over here, there is plenty to eat and drink. So starting with drinks, we are one of the best coffee scenes in the country. Same thing with beer. We are one of the largest craft beer scenes in the country. And then you move to wine. We have some great wineries. You head over to specifically to Woodenville, which is northeast of Seattle a little bit, but relatively close. There are over a hundred different wineries in Woodenville alone. So this is wine country right here, the Woodenville area. So if you're a wine connoisseur, that's where you wanna go to get some of your wine or go to wine tasting, things like that. So 
coffee, uh, beer, wine, perfect place to be for those kinds of things. For food, we've got a wide variety of food around here. It's a melting pot. So you've got all the different types of food that you could probably imagine over here. Of course, seafood, we're right on the Puget Sound. So we've got some of the best seafood over here, but you've got everything else as well. You've got a bunch of Mexican food places, uh, different types of Asian food, whether that's Thai or Chinese food. Um, you've got teriyaki is all over the place around here that people love and sushi. Um, you've got your traditional American food, some great restaurants. Uh, there's Italian places, great Italian places around here. So there are plenty of places that you can go eat that you will absolutely love in the greater Seattle area. All right, and the last uh, pro on my list here is great summers. So this is one of the best things about being in Seattle is to me, you can't really find a place with a better summer. Now, how I mentioned in a large part of the year, you've got a lot of gray, uh, drizzly, rainy weather. In the summer, you don't. So the summer really clears up. We're talking July, August, early September, really mid-June as well, where it's just absolutely perfect. It's not too hot for the most part, where you're just going to be sweating like crazy, not even going to want to be outside like some of these places like Texas and Arizona, some spots in California maybe some of these other areas that just get really hot, you're not gonna have that for the most part. So it's gonna be very pleasant and it's gonna be through the summer. You're not gonna get much rain at all in the summer. You're gonna get the sun a lot. So it's gonna be nice and bright. You're gonna be able to go outside and do those activities without feeling like it's too hot, but it's still plenty warm to enjoy water activities. You know, whether you're going on the lake or Puget Sound, you know, <clears throat> median temperatures in the hottest months are high 80 or high 70s low 80s so the perfect temperature uh, to go hang out outside in the summer all right well this wraps up my list of pros and cons of living in seattle washington so like i said if you're moving over this way you need help buying a home over here feel free to reach out to me here at my info on the screen be more than happy to assist you through that process and hopefully make that move over here a little bit easier for you but i appreciate you guys watching this video and feel free to check out some of these other videos right up here on some more content about living over here moving over to the seattle area and its surrounding suburbs thanks for watching this one